Jack Hill has dedicated his life to bettering the lives of others. By making the things he truly believed in a priority, he led a life worth living, one he and his family can be proud of. This is evident through his involvement in various organizations over the course of his life, donating his time and efforts to many great causes and leaving a lasting impression on the community of San Bernardino. To him, God, family, education, and community were of the utmost importance. Jack continually sought to raise his family to believe in these as well, and he did it the best way he knew how, by example. How would you describe Jack Hill? Jack is very much a people person, and as such, I think uh, his ability to lead uh, um, is very much enhanced by his ability to get along with people, to understand people, to communicate with people, and also to have a strong influence on people because of his genuineness and his concern that, that it comes out in all that he does, particularly what he does in a leadership role. He's a very open person, a caring person, and very, very helpful in many, many areas. Um, he's an ideal Christian man in that he led his family very, very well. He cared about them and uh, he brought that into our fellowship. Very unassuming, very quiet, and he's just a very, very competent and able guy that doesn't talk about himself. Jack is one of the most humble, respectful, kind, gentle human beings I have ever known. Well, I would describe Jack Hill as a, a doer. Jack Hill is a person that makes things happen. And I don't care what it is that comes to his mind. He gets in there and he's not going to rest until it happens. If he tells you something, you don't have to put it in writing. If he said it, he'll do it. He's the ultimate gentleman. I mean, if the, uh, you look up gentleman in the dictionary, there should be Jack Hill's picture next to it because uh, he, he is in every sense of the word that. I would say he's one of the most loving, kind men that God has ever put on the earth. He remembers you. Maybe not the name, but he will remember you. Very quick to give you a hug or a smile or whatever he felt that you might need, he would do that. When Jack looks at you and smiles, you know that, that, he, that he means it. Mm -hmm. It's not a put on. Um, he's an outstanding person. And he's very devoted to what he gets into. I was describing him as a, a pioneer, a leader. Uh, there are many things that I've heard since of, uh, that he's done in the community of San Bernardino, and uh, I, I, uh, I applaud him for that. He's admirable in every sense of the word. Uh, he is a great community leader and a humanitarian. Everything that I heard about Jack Hill, he has uh, lived up to it. He's a man of integrity. He is a person that will go down in history because he did a lot of things for history. His early life experiences helped shape the actions he would take for the rest of his life. My, uh, my family came out of Denton, Texas into Brawley, California, and then, uh, then the next stop was in San Bernardino. Came to San Bernardino when he was just a youngster, and I think we met up at the old Harding School in grade school, we met in, I think it was the sixth grade, and then we went on to Sturgis Junior High, we went in together in high school. He was a, an incredible athlete, and he was a very humble guy. He never, uh, he, he, he was a great athlete, but he was the last one to know it. He, at least he didn't brag about it or show off or nothing, and that impressed me. Uh, I graduated from San Bernardino High School, and which I happened to be graduated after a period of time because I was drafted into World War II. Upon returning home after serving in World War II, Jack was introduced to Jenny, a cousin on his stepfather's side, who had moved in with them at Jack's mother's insistence. This match made in heaven, he attributes to his mother. And my mother was sharp. Now she did, like I say, she didn't read or write, but she was sharp. My mother met this, this young girl, and she was just impressed with this girl. The next thing you know, her and I was in love. 
My mother saw the handwriting on the wall. We were in love, and and, uh, and we got married right in that yard in 1946. My wife was the sweetest thing that ever walked on God's earth. It, uh, she, would, she would stand behind me. If uh, her and I would talk over things that, that I was going to do, and, uh, and if, if she didn't agree too much with it, I didn't do it. I didn't do it. But it was very seldom that she disagreed with what we wanted to do. And the one thing that we had in life was a wonderful uh, togetherness. One wouldn't do without the other. Without her, I would have did nothing, honestly. I asked myself uh, so often the question, what would life have been like without her? I don't believe that a person could have a wife anywhere any better than what I had. And uh, what a life we did live together for those 63 years. He's truly a family man, uh, and um, a great, he was a great husband from all the things I could see. And one of the things that stood out for me was whenever we were away and uh, we were going on our tours and sightseeing, he always carried Jenny's purse. He always, he never wanted her to like be loaded down with anything. He always was right by her side and carried her purse. And to me that was just so loving and so caring, no matter what. He always was right there for her, and that's the same with his family. They are just close-knit, very, very quiet, but a very loving family. It starts with the family. It starts with the family, and, and the important part of, of even existing is being close-knit with the family, being concerned about others. Others play such important parts of one's life that uh, it, when it comes to the children, it, you got to think of the mother and the father and what they do and, and have done and try to do to instill the importance of being so concerned about other people, the love for people. I love my family, and, uh, and everything I did in my life, I did it because I wanted to improve my family. And improve his family he did. But before Jack ever had a family of his own, and before he married Jenny, he was in the military, making a name for himself. One his future family could be very proud of. Jack began his military career as a laundryman in segregated units and worked his way up to command sergeant major. During his service, he fought in Germany during World War II, and after returning home, he enlisted in the National Guard. He later fought in the Korean War and Berlin Crisis. The one thing that impressed me about Jack the most, of all the guys I know, Jack, this was probably the uh, most highly uh, promoted and decorated uh, non-commissioned officer that San Bernardino ever, ever produced, black or white. Jack Hill was a division master sergeant. That's the highest uh, ranking <coughs> non-commissioned officer out of 27,000 men. There's no other appointment like that that San Bernardino ever had. And, and it tells you something because when somebody gets promoted like that, he's obviously doing the right thing and uh, that uh, it was well deserved. I was so pleased. He's a member of the American Legion and one of the 13 original members to help establish Post 710, including writing the bylaws and standard operating procedures that are still in use today. Jack and I helped start the Post. He was the uh, community relations specialist and any time a member was ill or something, he would always be there to support him. Uh, he took very seriously the American Legion. 
uh, and the camaraderie ship among the fellow soldiers, you know, that come out the military, and that impressed me a lot, you know, and that made me feel welcome, you know. He helped with the uh, buying of the property, and, and you know, and saw the vision that we could be there and uh, make an American Legion post out of it, and that's been over 40 years ago. Knowing who he was and, and the stories that I heard about him and the things that he did, uh, it helped me focus on Post 710 to uh, be a, a beacon and a guiding force today. Jack served for 35 years, retiring in 1978, after which it was time for the next endeavor, Mr. Hill's Catering Company. When he was younger, Jack had attended San Bernardino Valley College, where he had taken a few culinary classes which afforded him enough experience to work part-time in a local restaurant. I had learned uh, some stuff about catering, and, and, uh, and I kid, went to work for a, a person that had the cocky cactus in town years ago on the corner of Mount Vernon and Fifth Street. And, that, and that's where I got really introduced to it. One day, a friend in need would come knocking, and Jack, ever the faithful friend, stepped up to the plate. I had a very good friend that I went to school with, an attorney in San Bernardino named Phil Castle. Mm -hmm. And uh, he said, Jack, you've got to help me. You've got to help me. I said, I know nothing hardly about it at all. He said, but you worked with the cocky cactus, and you know the food. You know how they do things. And uh, so I said, well, if you think I can help you, I'm going to help you. So I did. I helped him with his son with his first bar mitzvah. And uh, I did all the planning for it and all of that. And so after the bar mitzvah, uh, different ones began to call mm -hmm. Phil Castle to want to know who was the caterer. And so it began. Jack and Mrs. Castle teamed up and were an unstoppable duo, providing top-notch catering services to the San Bernardino area for years to come. He's an incredible cook. He's more than a cook, he's a chef. And uh, he said, if, if you had a real uh, uh, important meeting and you wanted to serve 100 people and you only had three hours to get it together, Jack could do it. I mean, he could just accomplish miracles. Now a business owner, Jack joined the San Bernardino Area Chamber of Commerce, where he would do work that continued to make his family proud. I first met Jack some 45 years ago. I was in awe of this distinguished looking black gentleman who was working with Barbara Castle. They were making this lovely breakfast of quiche and gigantic strawberries in champagne for us. I told him how wonderful everything was when I left, and he was gracious. However, I am sure he had no clue or ever remembered who I was. It wasn't until about 20 years ago that our paths crossed again when he just became a member of our Chamber of Commerce board. It was the main reason I became a member of the Chamber of Commerce was because of my, my business. Yeah. Jack had served as several leadership positions and I felt eventually it was time for him to be the chairman of our board. And it happened. And Jack served with a calmness only he could over the board that had not taken place in a couple of years. And with respect to others, and most importantly, a smile. Always with a smile. In 2003, Jack was voted in as the first black president of the Chamber of Commerce, and though he is no longer president, Jack still plays an active role on the board. However, by being part owner of Mr. Hill's Catering Company, it has allowed Jack to achieve still more. He was afforded the luxury of acting on one of his true passions, that of giving back. I did things for people that, and, and organizations that played a part in my life. Well, uh, I have worked closely with Mr. Hill for the past uh, 12 years. Uh, I was the chairperson of our annual uh, homecoming picnic. I went to Mr. Hill and Jenny, and he sat down and he explained to me what I needed to do, how to get the job done. I could not have done it without him. He is professional all the way around, and I just appreciate 
all the things that he'd done so very, very much to make our picnic a success. My first uh, association with Jack Hill was about uh, five years ago. Uh, I met him when I joined uh, New Hope Missionary Baptist Church. I joined the uh, picnic committee at New Hope. Somehow or another, I got on the meat committee to cook all the meat. And uh, Mr. Hill has a, a part of his garage turned into a walk-in cooler. And uh, with all the meat that we had to cook for the New Hope um, picnic, uh, we had to have somewhere to store it. And that's what we stored it was in his, uh, his uh, cooler. And uh, I got to know Mr. Hill because he came out every day and talked to us while we were cooking. New Hope is so grateful to him for that because can you imagine 700 pounds of ribs, 500 pounds of chicken, if we didn't have his facility to use, it would cost New Hope a humongous amount of money. God and the church have always played a significant role in Jack's life. Uh, Jack Hill has been a member of New Hope since 1950. He was baptized here. And uh, his family kind of grew up in the church. He was quiet, committed to the Lord and to his family. Um, my impression of him was uh, an ideal Christian man. When I was in the army, wherever I was, I had my Bible. That Bible meant so much to me. When, when we go into the field, or go on maneuvers, you could always bet that my Bible was right in my pack with me. Uh, he has made worship a priority in his life, and doing things that would be apropos and in line with what the Bible says a Christian is. And what I love about him is that I stand at the door each Lord's Day after I've preached he does not fail to come through that door to encourage me and to hug me. And he's done that every Sunday that I've ever preached in this church. And I'm proud to be a member of the Hope Baptist Church. Jack has learned many valuable lessons as a church-going Christian man, but perhaps none so memorable and with as far-reaching effects as one he experienced one Sunday long ago. I was a poor reader in Sunday school and and what they would, the Sunday school teacher would do would have us to, they would uh, give us verses to read. And, uh, and I, would, I would make sure that I was sitting far enough away that I had the opportunity to ask people to help me with certain words. Uh, and when, by the time they would get to me, I would be all set. Well, someone got up and, and walked out, and that threw me all off. And when they got to me, I stumbled so, and I just, I couldn't do it. And the Sunday school teacher told me, she says, if I couldn't read any better than that, I'd stay home. And I really think it helped me instead of harm me. Because by the time I got to uh, high school, I took up public speaking. And I let nothing get in my way when it came to, uh, when I'd have to get up and speak in a class or speak anywhere. And I think that that played an important part of my life because it uh, took away the fear if I couldn't do it, I worked it till I could do it. That determination was a quality of Jack's that many people respected. His ability to speak in public, the value he placed on education, and the love he had for his community made him an ideal member and eventually president of various organizations that served to improve his hometown. When it comes to education, uh, I think of my sister. Uh, my mother didn't read or write. And my sister, uh, she, she did all the uh, helping me through with uh, the reading and writing and, and really being involved and interested 
in what it takes in life to do anything would be through the education that you have. Uh, I believe Jack's involvement in the library was primarily because uh, libraries serve the people who need it most. Many of the children in our community, uh, particularly in San Bernardino, are of, from lower income families who obviously have very strong needs and uh, Jack understands the significance of those children being able to have uh, available to them things like computers, uh, things like books, areas where they can study, uh, classes of various kinds. Uh, so so he, he's sensitive to those needs. Uh, he has, he's very caring about in individuals. He has this very strong compassion. And I think that's what he brought to those organizations. And he brought them not just as a member, but he brought them with, with a true sense of, of, of compassion and desire to, to help people. Jack served as a member of the library board for 22 years. But education wasn't Jack's only passion. As an establishing member of an organization by the name of Neighborhood Housing Services of the Inland Empire, Jack sought to overcome yet another struggle his community faced. The importance of having a home played a big role in my life. Uh, that's why I devoted so much of my time to uh, that organization was because of being able to help homeowners, help low-income people. Uh, have a home, a roof over their head. Of course, Jack, as leader, was, was very significant in that role, and I attribute that much to his ability to, as I've indicated, to uh, be a people person and to get along with people. Uh, he's very caring and loving and concerned. He's lived here for a long, long time, so he has a deep felt regard for the history and the knowledge of San Bernardino. Uh, and, and he, he, he brings that in, in his involvement. He's not just a member who is there who has a physical presence. He very much brings that compassion and that passionate attitude about uh, genuinely trying to help people. Uh, and in this community there's a number of people that need help. And Jack Hill is just the man for the job. You know the thing about things that you do, uh, or legacies that you leave, you know, it's there for everyone to know. And you don't have to brag about it or nothing. He's never said to me, well, you know, I did this, I did that, you know, it speaks for itself. We need black men who serve as role models, and he has been exactly that. And we'll get more men working with their families, staying with their families, caring about their children and their family members to the degree that he wants them educated. He did that, and he even worked uh, three and four jobs to, to do it. He is a shining example for anybody to follow if you wanted to talk with young people, the first thing he would tell them, never, never, never quit. Always keep pushing. Not only has Jack done what he could to help others, but he also enabled them to help themselves, which is far more important. The many lives that he has touched throughout his lifetime have been altered for the better, and there are undoubtedly countless people who have benefited from his influence in more ways than one and didn't even know it. He believes that we all have the ability and duty to love our families and make them proud. Jack might have wondered what life would have been like without Jenny, but we don't want to know what life would have been like without Jack.